Well, my father is John Jeffrey Batiste Sr. He's from, he was born in New Iberia and raised in New Iberia in Lafayette. And until he was about 20, 21, he told me that he couldn't speak good English because they spoke the French. <laughs> and in school, they would pop them on their hands when they were in class and they spoke French. They wanted them to speak American, you know, I mean, speak English, basically, you know. So, um, but he, he, my dad went up to maybe the, um, the sixth grade in school and he had to drop out and then work with his dad in the fields and what have you. But he turned out to be um, an entrepreneur, yes, a, a traveler, um, uh, you know, from moving to New York from New Orleans and right. staying next to staying next to Frankenstein, Boris Karloff, ah, mm -hmm. New York. Yeah. Wow. My dad was a chauffeur driving in New York because he got a good recommendation from the people in Louisiana to sure. give him a good job in New York. Yes. And he, the building that he stayed in that he drove for the guy, Boris Karloff, stayed in that wow. same building. Yeah. Wow. He, Boris Karloff gave my daddy a camera in 1946, and, and he took a picture of, he was, my dad told me he was getting ready to throw it away. And he, and he said, could I have that camera? And mm. Mr. You know, Karloff gave it to my dad. And he wow. took a picture of my beautiful mother back then and my yeah. brother, John, who was born in New York, my older brother, John. And John yes. was maybe about six or seven months old, and he took that picture with uh, Frankenstein's camera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Wow, amazing. Yeah. That's just an incredible story. Yes, uh, well, he didn't lead to me getting the piano. Mr. Anderson recommended to my dad that I got a drum, you know, to play, because mm. uh, I was playing the bass drum in the junior high school marching band. But okay. the piano came before that. Mm. And okay. the story about this piano is when my dad was working for one of the universities in the, in the Garden District area, he would catch the streetcar right. and come down world famous Oak Street. You would get off the streetcar on Oak Street. And yes. walked down to Camberon Street, where he, he, his mother and the family lived after moving out of Lafayette in, right. in, in that particular area. So he would he said he would hear piano music yes. as he walked down Oak Street. And one day he got a chance to speak to. He said this elderly white lady was playing the piano. Yes. Uh, it was in sort of a restaurant, uh, uh, something of that nature. Sure. And. Um, he asked her, he said, the piano sounds wonderful. Would you consider selling it? And if you did, would you let me know? Now, you yeah. remember how race relations is that this is in the 40s. Wow. The mid 40s, you know. And um, Dad said, she sold it to him. Wow. Because obviously, she did. We had it at the house. So yes. they, they moved the piano from Oak Street to Camberon Street. Right. And that's where. We, I first came into uh, physically contact, you know, as a young kid, four or five years old, to bang on the piano. Right. And then watch my dad bang on the piano. My yes. mother, with a hymn book, she would sit there and try to play some, some of her Baptist hymns. Because uh, my dad was from Lafayette, New Iberia, and we were raised partially Catholic. Right. Uh, but my mother was from Jonesboro and Lovejoy, Georgia. So that was right. Baptist. <laughs> that was stomp your feet. Right. Oh, Lord Jesus, I thank you, Jesus. Yeah, yeah, that, was yeah. yeah that was that feel. I so we I got the combination, and she used to be sitting down on the piano. And then my sure. Uncle Peter, who was a uh, a Navy veteran, he would sure. come in by and visit my dad, his brother. Yeah. And my Uncle Peter was very, very Creole. Right. You couldn't tell was he was a white man or a black man. Mm. You could tell the family had been tampered with. <laughs> Somewhere along the way. At some point. Yeah. And Uncle Peter looked white. He looked like a white man. He was so he looked like a white man so much until he was able to join the Navy. Mm. Wow. You know, back then in in the Navy, a black man and you know, joining right. the Navy. And um and so he would come by and visit my dad. And he'd get on the piano and bang on the piano. And he would be he'd be have a little taste, you know. 
sometimes and he'd be smashed and he'd just get on the piano and play. So as a young kid, I would watch that. Mm-hmm, but, you mm-hmm. know, I was I was four or five years old, yeah. and uh, all I saw is the white keys and the black keys, yeah. and uh, so that's how the piano and the this and the Batiste family and John Jeffrey Batiste Senior family started when that wonderful white lady sold my dad that piano and sure. brought that piano into our lives. And that's how we heard live music, you know, and my sure. dad would try and play on it a little bit, but my dad wasn't a pianist. My mother wasn't a pianist. Um, nor was my uncle Pete, but they knew enough just to bang on it a little bit. And uh, it, it, it just, I fell in love with it. Well, it, it, I was yeah. The blues is, mm-hmm. is, is 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 just a natural field, and I learned how to play by ear. Mm-hmm. So I would make up, I would make up my own songs. Sure. Like, yes. You know, I'd be like something like. Yeah, well, yeah, by having that ear, man, listen, I would see, you shake my nerves and you rattle my brain, everything you do is drive me insane, <laughs> Jerry Lee Lewis, Thank on the piano, uh-huh. Lord have mercy, <laughs> yeah. I, would see him, I would see him attack the piano, you know, yes. so, so watching Jerry Lee Lewis yes. and Little Richard, no, Richard. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then, of course, from my dad, it started with my dad and my Uncle Peter, you know, right. playing on the piano with them and, and watching them as a kid. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the, the songs, as I said, the blues songs. And then later on, I found out that the song that my Uncle Peter was playing mm-hmm. was a song by Ray Charles called Worried Life Blues. Mm-hmm. Plus he used to be saying, Oh, Lordy, Lord. Oh, Lordy, Lord. You hurt me so bad. I swear to God. <laughs> oh, but someday, baby, I ain't gonna worry about it. So I, he was just messing around, and he was singing about he was singing about my aunt Laura. <laughs> hey, <wow. laughs> him and I got in a dispute, <laughs> and he was talking uh-huh. about my brother, by his dad, my, my father. <laughs> he sang the blues on the piano, sure. but word like blue. But and and as a young kid. Now, I remember I, in junior high school, I was playing the, the, the band, but when we'd have football games, right. I played the bass drum. I would ha- always have a little a little beat. Boop, tap, mm-hmm. boop, tap, boop, boop. And I just, that was just in my head, you know, right. uh, and I'd be beating on the bass drum, and then, you know, it's a football game, so the audience, the kids, and everybody's going. And, right. um, and so Mr. Anderson, my band teacher, said, he told my dad, he said, man, your son has some extraordinary rhythm, man. He, and, and he plays his you know, drum well, you right. know, so you need to get him his, his own drum because I was playing on a school bass drum. Yeah. And so thinking that he was going to buy me a single drum, uh, my dad brought me a drum kit, a snare uh-huh. drum, one cymbal, right. a bass drum, foot pedal. Yes. And uh, that was it. That was yeah. his drum set. And man, I couldn't get... The hand and the foot fit together, and the and and the leg and all that working at one time. So just pounding on it. One day after school at the house, we had an area between the two blocks where we stayed at. Um, we had something called a shortcut, where you go from one street to another street, you know, passing through the neighborhood. And one of, one of the, the guy heard me pounding on the drums. Sure. So his name was George McGee, and he came mm-hmm. to the house. And he and he and, and uh, um, he said, "Hey, you hey, he got some drums on Baptiste?" I said, "Yeah, you know." So he was a little, a little bit older than myself, and uh, he said, "I know how to play those. Can I play your drums?" So he got on the drums, and I got on the piano. And George would play, and, and boom, we would, we would play together. I was learning how I was making up songs on the piano, you know, as I was going along, you know. Just, just create, just stuff that I had to do. Um, 
Let's do a little bit of piano or something on that. Something like this. So in Georgia, you get that tap, that beat. So now we right. you know the song. I made a melody, and then I learned how to go from a twelve bar blues. In other words, make changes from the one to the four to the five. So I now right. I made up a song on the piano, and George right. is keeping the beat. And right. then coming through that same pathway, uh, uh, the young man by the name of Edgar Peterson, his nickname was Dap. Right. Yeah, Dap was Dap was blacker than black crayon. <laughs> and he would, mm -hmm. he would have a, a do-rag tied around his process. His process right. never seemed to be fixed. He right. always had that do-rag. Because right. he was always, he worked for the railroad. So Dad right. was working hard. I mean, his family worked for the railroad. And they were railroad right. driven those spikes and stuff. So mm -hmm. that, that could play the guitar, man. And he mm -hmm. sang like Ray Charles. Wow. Wow. So now we got George on the drums. I'm putting banging on the piano. And Dap, you know, he got his own guitar. Because we don't have a guitar. But right. he had one. Right. And he was older than us. Most right. of the musicians that I started playing with were two four or five years older than myself mm -hmm. but I, I learned how to play so well until i was uh, attracting these older musicians yeah that would, right. you know, that would, i was learning from them yeah and in fact that's how my brother started because when the older musicians drifted off and got married and some of them were married already and stopped playing my mm -hmm. younger brothers which were very talented was learning from these guys. Yes. yes. You know, so my brother Paul, he learned how to play the bass in the in, in the in the guitar, the rhythm guitar. My brother right. Michael, he learned how to play the bass. You know, right. and incidentally, my brother Michael's son is John Batiste. He's up for eleven Grammys. Yes. You know. Very well. Yes. You know, and uh, you know, man, as we were talking the other day, Doc, I just saw a commercial <laughs> with him on there. I said, "Look at that on my Elm Street." You know, yes. uh, from that okay. piano. From that yeah. piano, my daddy bought, man, and uh, so, so now we got David, Dap, and George, and then a, a guy who's a big uh, time minister right now. He he got moved on. His name was Gerald Cheatham. He played yeah. bass. Wow. So now we got a band. Right. And the band was called King David and the Gladiators. Yes, exactly. You know, so. Um, and the year was 1962. Yes, 1962, 63. Yeah. And uh, yeah, by the time I was doing night by by 1964, um, in junior high school, I was a high school quarterback championship that brought our high school to a champ their first championship. Uh, our junior high school, the first year we played, we lost every game. And the second year we came back and we won the championship. And I was the quarterback that drove them to that. In the neighborhood, I mean, uh, 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 a community hero for the yes. high, junior high school and that and ralph j bunch was the first african-american black junior high school in this area in the area where i was living at called right. jackson parish we had yes. to go out of our parish to find other schools we would wind up playing high schools what they were called b teams right every night they were sneaking some of their the a players <laughs> right. they, they saw this they had some chumps the first time around yeah we're gonna just run over them but the right. second time around, they, they made him pay. We we made him pay. It. Yes. Uh, I, yeah, I got a, a, a 99 yard touchdown under my belt. I right. threw for two touchdowns, homecoming game. And then after we ran, run two touchdowns, homecoming game, threw two touchdowns to my brother Paul, by the way. He played on the right. football team. He was the fullback, <laughs> and I was the quarterback. Then right. here come those Baptiste boys again. And. Exactly. Um, and then my band would play for the the dance at the school, you know. And in this okay. school, man, I had I had good teachers because I was sort yeah. of the class clown, man. I didn't know I had dyslexia that was hard keeping me from reading and keeping up with the the kids, you know. Uh, I even failed one year behind, you know, behind not having knowledge. Now my mom and dad, they had my mother and father had seven of us, so. Right. By the time I was in junior high school and everything else, they were dealing with my other younger brothers and stuff, you know. So uh, I had to do the best I could. And my older brother John, he was most of the time he was in private school, gone away. 
to schools, you know? Right. So, um, but the music thing, I could do that. I yes. that real good, you know? And it's that same teacher, man, boy, I need to get out of here. You're too big to be in this class. You ain't gonna be, boy, you ain't gonna be nothing. The next thing you know, he's saying, wow, look at David Baptiste. Mm. Look at look at Mr. Batiste. He's he he's he's at the White House. Right. That, yeah, he, yeah. He's from our school. Yeah, <laughs> right, right, right. yeah, yeah he gonna, changed that he changed that tune. You know? Changed the tune middle. He was a wonderful I had a wonderful principal. His name was Teddy Stewart. And he yes. motivated me and he and he and he pushed me. And wonderful teachers. Uh my my coach uh coach Mac was like my father to me because when my dad was busy about dealing with the other kids, and right. you know, uh, either he had to work late. Coach Mack, mm -hmm. our football coach, was like a father to a whole bunch of us. Sure. You know, God bless his soul; he's in heaven right now. And he was another inspiration that say, David, you can do this. Mm -hmm. You know, he said, "Don't tell me you can't do it. You can do this," and he got it done. Uh, cut out. That was okay. that was a song. Yeah, that was a song that we played on the talent show. Sure. And that was the song I was fumbling around learning on on the piano. You know, I just yes. couldn't get everything right. But after a while, I got the song made sense. Then. I learned how to do it by myself. Nobody taught me that. I learned right. that. Right. And that same song, we we won first place at in the talent show with the band. Yeah. You know, right. but as I said, I was a wild man behind the piano. I I, I watched. So I played like Jerry Lewis. I stand up and kick the stool back and be <laughs> playing. All the stuff on the piano, yeah, <laughs> spinning around and uh, drop to my knees on the piano. And so we were a show band. We just didn't stand sure. up there. And I would just push everybody else, you know, play the guitar behind your head, but brother would get to play. So um, we were a, a, a good show band, and okay. that song cut out was the, the song. And not only that, in 1965, my daddy took all out of school because right. my older brother John had, was, had went into the Air Force. So the draft was right. being drafted going into the Army. John finished from St. Augustine High School, which is oh. one of the prominent high schools here in the, in, in, in the United States, quite frankly, yeah. for African Americans, young men. And my brother John was the first one to finish from that, uh, from our family. And uh, incidentally, I'm ahead of myself. John was the one who told us about the talent show at St. Aug. And that lit it, that started the whole band thing, because yeah, we started. John came home one day and said, Hey, David. The, I, St. Aug has a talent show and the stuff that you and George, y'all were knocking around in the living room doing, y'all could be just as good as the guys in that talent show. So he brought us to see the talent show. Gymnasium, full of people. It was like going to the Apollo, man. You know, exactly. we're gonna get to the, the St. Augustine talent show, you had the premier yes. young entertainers that participated in that talent show. Yes. yes. And so uh, we were from out in, in suburb, suburban New Orleans. Uh, right. A place called Little Farms, but they called us Country Boys because it was coming from Little Farms. <laughs> Little right. Farms, yeah, seven miles outside the town. You know, we'd miss that last bus, but we have to walk from in the city of New Orleans all the way back out to the suburbs, seven right. miles. But right. anyway, we had to come in and play our way off of Elm Street into that New Orleans music scene. Mm. But we were that good, yeah, and and that yeah, oh yeah, we we wiped out. Everybody on that talent show. Sure. And so, and then we started winning talent shows at the, the, the Dillard University, Xavier University, the, you know, the prominent premier colleges around. And sure. from there, my dad said, pull us out of school. Right. Today, uh, I think um, our vice president 
uh, um, was celebrating the march across the Edmund Pettus Bridge yes. in March. That was 55 years ago, somewhere in that neighborhood. That's when we were traveling, going to New York. Right. And from the when my daddy pulled all of us out of school, plus two our neighbors, uh, uh, Stanley Ratcliffe, because George had moved on. As I said, right. all of these guys were here, and George was on drums. So when George left, I got I hired Ratcliffe to be the drummer. Right. And and then George's brother, because George used to sing too. George's brother sound like Sam Cooke. Man, mm -hmm. I didn't know that the McGee brothers had a gospel group, you know. Right. You know I mean, four four, four brothers uh, that sung together, man. That, that sung like the mighty clouds of joy. I mean, they these, these, they were good. They were like they sound like the William brothers, gospel stuff. So yes. that's who William and George come out of singing and that gospel um, that sanctified soulful in you know, the Church of God and Christ. And right. uh, so anyway, we got, my daddy took all 11 of us this day wow. to New York. And right. when we left New Orleans, say, the, the, um, I think on the 8th, because we wanted mm -hmm. in New York on the 9th, um, they, uh, they thought we were Freedom Riders. People mm -hmm. were not Freedom Riders. We, they thought we were two cars of people going to join uh, African Americans to go wow. to the Edmund Pettus Bridge and be a part of that. And boy, right. did we get harassed by 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 racist whites that didn't wow. that you know thought we were a part of that. Then right. we made it out of the South to D.C. and Virginia, going to New York, right. and they thought we were Muslim going to be a part of Malcolm X's situation because mm -hmm. he had gotten killed in '65. Right. So right. we were getting harassed on both ends. Every but step. My father, my father was a genius, man. <laughs> John <laughs> Baptiste, I love you. You know, he, he, my dad would, would he got us there. And, yes. and on, the, on the way there, out of those two cars, one of them broke down in Roanoke, Virginia. Oh, no. And my daddy shipped our music equipment to New, New York. Remember, he used to work in New York. He stayed there as a chauffeur, you know. Right. And, and the fathers, then after a while, him and my mom, uh, whom he met in New York, uh, right. they worked as people working in, in the ships. Painting the ships right. and everything. That's just wartime, you know, doing that. So he didn't go in the military because right. he was injured. His hands was in it. So he participated as a working for the uh, United States, as a lot of other people did that wasn't in the military, working on the ships. Right. So, um, but dad got our stuff shipped from Virginia to New York. Mm -hmm. 11 of us piled in one car and drove from Roanoke, Virginia to New York. But my younger brothers, John Baptiste, and like played Mr. Tobel's band director, his dad was maybe eight or nine or somewhere. I mean, he was a child back then, you know. And right. so, and, and so, the, uh, and two of my other younger brothers that was under him, uh, James and Thomas, so they piled in the lap. We just, I don't know how my dad did it. That's why I right. said he was in. We got to New York. Right. We moved in. We stayed with uh, some of my mother's people. Right. As I said, my dad met my mom in New York, but my mom right. and her sisters stayed in New York. Right. And they were uh, eight of the most prettiest women that you ever wanted to see. My dad said when he walked in to, to get my mom's sister, right. that's who he was going there to meet. He walked out with my mother. <laughs> <laughs> By the time her sister went back to get dressed, he saw my mom. Boom, there was out. It was over. <laughs> yeah, that's too late. <laughs> Sister, I guess you must apologize to her. <laughs> Not my dad. Yeah. And, yeah. Oh, man. So, I mean, we used to see this picture. All of them look like Lena Horn, man. I mean, just beautiful women, you know. And Dorothy Dandridge looking women, you know. So, um, and so my dad, so they met in New York. So, my dad hooked it up for us in 1965 to audition. Right. For the Apollo talent show. Now we had done these talent shows down here. We had no real idea sure. that we were actually going to do this. Right. And my dad kept talking about somebody he met in the forties when he met my mother and he was living. And they used to run. They used to go to the Apollo, you know. Right. That's true. And so my dad had a connection. So yeah. who man? We actually get to New York. Sure. And my he's dad goes. We go by my mother's people place. 
And right. my dad go to the Apollo Theater, talk to some people, and right. next thing you know, we auditioned. Wow. Yeah, Incredible. and we did so well. We played about 50, 30 seconds into the, the you know, so what y'all gonna play? And boom, right. we had our own original song, you know, yes. and um, it's called Do You Feel All Right? Sure. And 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 we played just a little bit of it. The guy said, stop, wait, wait. How soon can y'all go on? Wow. <laughs> he said, yeah, we can go on tomorrow. And um, yeah, I, that, I had a flat top haircut, man, like kid in place, straight up box top. Right. And that was the first time I got a round afro. Because, mm. you know, in the 60s, 1965, you got your afro now. So I got right. my hair cut the first time, cut in afro shape uh, mm. when I had hair. <laughs> and um, and we did, the, we, we came on. B.B. King cousin was, was had won for the last three weeks or four weeks at the show because you got to win two or three weeks or something like that to get sure. whatever the award was. Exactly. And man, we we knocked him out. Wow. You know, there was, once again, country boys, don't make that mistake. It's all this country boys from Louisiana. Don't count us out. And um, we had the Apollo like it was the Michael Jackson concert. The people were out there screaming that they, they just, you know, we had that 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 low down back beat that Stan the Radcliffe had on the drums. William right. McGee sang, he sounded like Sam Cooke. I was playing right. the piano like Jerry Lee Lewis, you know. Right. I had a little horn electric piano. I had to play it and lay it over. Who playing the keys sideways? I got the people out there screaming, you know, kick my leg up, you know, doing just all kinds of, you know. I was remember I was a football athlete, bro, so I, I had that. <laughs> That, like that, that physical thing about me, yeah. And, yeah. Uh, and 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 then William sang and my brother Paul playing. Uh, in fact, Paul couldn't. We didn't, we didn't have a bass player, so Paul played bass instead of playing guitar. So the mm -hmm. piano, the bass, and the drum that was the instruments, and then William sang, and that was David and Gladiators at the Apollo, and uh -huh. and you know you have the house band that backs the artists that come in. Right. But before before we did that. Mm -hmm. A young lady came on, she was playing the Paul of Thomas song. And she sounded wonderful. G Wiss, she was singing, Look at His Eyes, man. It's G Wiss by Carl Thomas. It was a great song. And the, sure. the young lady that was singing played the piano, dressed nice, man. And But in the balcony, Sure. That was the RuPaul people. The RuPaul saw the people in the balcony, if you know what I'm saying. Right. And if they didn't like you, no matter how good you was, you know. That was it. So all of a sudden, you hear somebody go, oh, blah, 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 and then right. threw something down out of the balcony. And oh, then no. once they started throwing stuff. Then all of a sudden, she's still singing and playing. All of a sudden, all kinds of stuff started coming out of the balcony, raining down. Oh, no. People right. started, boo! And the siren went off, oh! and then the microphone shot down in the floor. Whoop! The lady was in tears. She didn't know what was going on. And then all of a sudden, the guy come out of the place shooting a blank pistol. Pow! 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 pow. And they pull out, they pull out off of the stage. He goes, "Holy Jesus!" They call him this country voice for Louisiana, and we up next. Right. They're gonna wow. kill us, you know. And we playing something they never heard before. Right. And, right. Uh, Barbara, we kick it off. We say, do you feel all right? Tell me, do you feel all right? You know you make me wanna. With Ratcliffe and that backbeat, bro, it was on. I had been dating my wife while I was in junior high school. Okay. So when I left to New York, yes. to go to New York, you know, how I was barfing and girlfriend is. But when I came back from New York in 65, I got married in 65. <laughs> yeah, they heard about what happened in New York. No, no, no. Wait a Let's do this right now. <laughs> and, and my oldest son, Russell, was born in 1965. That right. nine months later after I got married, Russell was born. You know. Right. Um, so it happened after that trip, but that trip was an uh, ordeal. Right. And it was all facilitated by my dad. 
That was the man. He was the one who bought the that little. I said I was playing the piano. It's called a Hana electric piano. Mm -hmm. And my dad, after he bought the drums, he bought that the piano for me. You know, and mm -hmm. uh, that was the first electric piano in our house and in that neighborhood. Right. That style of piano. Right. It look. It look. It looks like that. 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 Uh, 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 clavinet that you always see Stevie Wonder playing that brown right. long keyboard with the you know, top mm. of playing higher ground on and stuff. That right. the, the, this was the piano in that same style. In fact, they're made by the same people on the clavinet mm. on the piano. Right, very same. And um, that um, was the piano we played on. The song right. we played, we, we won on was called "Do You Feel All Right." Right. And, but we couldn't defend our championship. Mm. Remember, my dad was bringing my brother to, he had joined the Air Force, and his, right. his base was Otis Air Force Base in Boston. So my dad, the, rich, the trip was to go to New York, y'all will camp out in New York while I take your older brother to Boston, and when I come mm. back, you know, we're going to go. But in between that, <laughs> you know, uh, in fact, he brought he had been brought John to Boston already, because John wasn't John went at the parlor with us. John was, they, they made us to his base. And my dad came back and then arranged that uh, Apollo thing, man. And right. wow. uh, Just like then that. after we won, even right. the guy said, what y'all going to play next? After y'all, what's your next song? And we did a song called Nothing Can Change His Love by Sam Cooke, uh, mm -hmm. that William song. And we just did a little bit of it. If I go with me, it, oh, man, it just, wow. It just, but we had that sound. In fact, as I said, I, I got ahead of myself. While we were rolling, the people was hollering and screaming. The house band jumped in. And the mm. house band on that particular show, Jerry Butler was on the show. Oh, uh, Maxine Brown was on the show. Gladys Knight and the Pips was on that show, and the Original oh. Temptations. Wow. And they have the big concert with the major stars, and then after the big concert, they have the Amateur Hour. Right. So right, exactly. while you're waiting on your the Amateur Hour. You sitting backstage, yeah. hanging out with the Temptations, right. hanging out with Gladys Knight and the Fifth, and Jerry right. Butler had "I Stand Accused." Our yes. Temptations had "My Girl." Uh, Gladys right. Knight had "Ready to the Grapevine" and uh, the other Jeez. song. And um, I seen Brown had "All in My Mind." All of them had major hits. Yes, and, yes. You know, we they was hanging out, man. Like, you know, it just um, and, and I, I had no idea later on in life that I would be David Ruffin's band director when he left the Temps. Right, I, you know, and then opened up for the Temps later on right. in life when right. Dennis Edwards was, you know, Papa was the Rolling Stone when Dennis joined yep. the group. Well, you know, being a father, you know, um, I have fourteen kids, seven daughters and seven sons. Right. And um, that's not a boast, it's just the fact of life. So mm -hmm. I had to deal with all 14 of those kids' mothers. <laughs> that wasn't easy, you know? So, uh, but all of my kids today, today we all are one family, nice. you know? And it, the, the mental toughness that it would take is love. You know, when I saw I loved every one of my kids. Yes. You know, every one of them, the same. I, mean, I treated all of them the same, whether he was living in the house with me or not. And right. then today, it, it shows that because all four times we all come together now with a smile and love and hug and, you know, we this big loving family. And um, my baby daughter, Chanel, is the, um, she, she's two master's degree, a doctor's degree. She graduated from the University of Chicago to uh, Xavier University. She graduated from Dillard, Nichols State, and um, and she's now Dr. Chanel Batiste, clinical psychologist. Thirty-one years old. And the baby son, who's six foot six, and I thought he's a basketball player, but right. he went to NOCA. He, he graduated from the same school John Batiste graduated from NOCA. He's, he's right. a musician, and right now he's also a school teacher. And uh, he's a professional musician. Ryan Batiste Shagadelic, he has his own site. Uh, Jamal Batiste, Jamal Pro, he has a site. Uh, my yes. son Russell, Russell Batiste, for 22 years, 
he's with the meters in fact yes. they're doing a big big tribute thing um to art Neville, who passed from the meters uh this coming jazz fest and my right. son and son russell is a, a big part of that and yeah. then my son damon he's a producer he's worked with uh, george clinton he, yes you know he um oh yeah uh and let's see we've all worked with the you know opening up concerts and damon batiste he has a um company called nosacon new orleans south african connection which is yes. huge for um man i've, I've, I've met marion mckeever through yes. through my son damon hugh massacre uh jimmy Duglu, uh uh yusin Nindua, you know some of the you know some of the top african uh, the, the 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 um what is the the mohatola queens i've yes. had a chance and god bless one the, the lead singer i think she just recently passed away those are historic african uh female vocalists uh, mm -hmm. uh from south africa so um that's my son damon's company uh nosacon yes um, so um w working with my kids man and that's 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 been about it living through that legacy that my dad left for me by buying that piano and yes. uh all my dad said was just do something right with your life you know and mm -hmm. be be humble be very humble All right, this is called New Orleans is coming back. Yeah. Wonderful. 